We need to talk because I didn't expect this in Tunisia. I'm so excited. We are now in Tunisia, in Tunis, or La Tunisie, depends what language you speak. But we're gonna start from the north, from this place here, and come all the way south to this place here. But I want you to come with me on this journey and tell me if this is what you thought about it. This is the fourth most important city in the Islamic world. Welcome to Kerwan. Indeed, this holy city ranks fourth after Mecca, Medina and Jerusalem as a place of pilgrimage. Its large mosques and cultural history have seen it added to the UNESCO World Heritage List. I heard one of the best things with this Medina is the bread. So let's go to a local bakery to find out. Absolutely amazing, this local bakery. It's a quarter of dinar, which is like 10 cents. And it's delicious, absolutely delicious. And I love how they bake bread. This is just fantastic. So we're in this hotel in the middle of nowhere. It's in the south of Tunisia. To come to the south, it was a quite a long journey. So let me taste warm milk and dates. I never tried it before, but I loved it. For some reason, people stopped visiting Tunisia many years ago, recently, in 2015, terrorist attacks. But now, it looks definitely like a much safer country. If you come to the south, you will see everything full of palms, the desert, areas where you can only dream of. You think, what? They filmed that movie here? I didn't even know this was real. Absolutely different from the north, where we had a lot of vineyards and so on. This is kind of a lost city. It has been completely destroyed. And the only thing left is palm trees. And then obviously we have the canyon. It's a sad story. Here they filmed a lot of movies. They filmed Star Wars, The English Patient. There was one movie actually between Turkey and Saudi Arabia. Pretty much against Turkey, but because they improved their relationships, they stopped the movie. So you could see the whole film set in the middle of the desert. I am so thirsty. I need some water. Looks like water, so let's walk. It looks like water, but it's a mirage. There's no water here. A lot of people stop in cars, trucks, and so on. They get completely lost here. It's just the reflection. Oh, that's it. Yeah, you can throw it at like 10 times speed, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, if you're a fan of Star Wars, then you will be pleased to know that here in 1997, they made some iconic scenes of the movie. This was this planet Tatooine, a crazy planet where very weird creatures lived. Everything happened here. This is a real one. Of course, there were scenes shot in the Death Valley in the US, but the majority of the original film were here in the Sahara, in Tunisia. This was the planet Tatooine. You can tell this was really long time ago. So we are now in this place called El Cherit, the biggest salt lake area in the Sahara here in Tunisia. When we were driving here, I saw everything blue. Google Maps is showing this completely blue, but there's no blue. It's just salt, nothing, no water. Gosh, it's so hot. It's like 60 degrees at the moment. I'm not made for 
to this type of climate. This is where we plan to camp today, in the middle of the Sahara. Sunset is taking place. This will be the tents, and now we're gonna see how they make bread. They told us you got to be careful, there can be snakes and stuff like that, but hey, who cares, it's nature, all of that stuff is gonna happen. Anyway, it was a super, super intense day, all I wanna do today is to rest, so speak to you tomorrow, good night. In the mountains of southern Tunisia, Matmate is a village of houses made in caves. Quick stop in a Maison Troglodit, which is pretty much a very important place for the Berbers' culture. This system has enabled inhabitants since Phoenician times to protect themselves from very strong heat waves. But guess what I found near these caves? Star Wars Hotel. Is this even possible? I don't really know who is staying here, but uh, they told me that they filmed here. As you can see, Star Wars is truly one of those things that Tunisians feel proud of, or at least something that they seriously want to promote when people visit their country. It's a long drive that we have from here, but it's so exciting because, well, you will see. It's time to head back north to see something spectacular that we missed on the way. And this is one of the largest Roman amphitheaters in the world. I'm not in Italy, I'm in Africa, I'm in Tunisia. So welcome to our journey. This is truly Tunisia's biggest historical attraction. Once a stage for bloody gladiatorial battles during the Roman era. Even for travelers in Tunisia who are mainly here for sun and sea holiday, this UNESCO World Heritage Site is a must do. Al Cham's mighty amphitheater is the fourth largest in the Roman world. 149 meters long by 122 meters across. It's also of impressive height, 40 meters. It provided seating for more than 30,000 spectators. Some estimates are even saying 60,000 people were witnessing this bloody gladiatorial contest and slaughters of criminals by wild animals staged in the arena. Seeing Al Cham really gave me the sense of not only these structures used, but also of the power the Roman Empire once held across this land. I have to say that at some point there were over 4,000 people coming here. There's nobody here today, not many people. I'm surprised because when you go to Italy, it's crazy. Welcome to Algeria, Argentina. <laughs> Very nice, nice people, nice country. We love you. Argentine, c'est un pays ami avec l'Algérie. Je suis d'accord. Marhaba Biko Fidzaïr. Welcome to Algeria. And uh, bienvenue en Algérie. Bienvenue en Algérie. Achal, achal, le roi de la Casbah. I love you.